Just remember, welcome to America. Young Finnish racer once said, Miyagi, teach me how to RC. And he said, first you must sweep. Oh, no, that's a different story. I think that's a movie. Old movie quotes, whatever. It's JQ Racing. You may have seen his blog, you may not have, but he has a new car. It's called the Black Edition. The car, the Black Edition. Here it is. It looks like every other A-Skill buggy. And that's no surprise. He went away from the radically different, narrow, thin, Euro, Capri Pants version and gave us this. This clean, tidy, well put together, better quality material, racing buggy. Usually I babble about this car for a long time, but now we have someone else to babble. We talked to JQ himself, and here he is to talk about it. When you look at the Black Edition, it's, it's not completely different to the White Edition. You know, the White Edition LV we had, it looks very similar to this. So some people would be, oh, he just changed the anodizing and gave it a new name, and, and that's all it is. But the truth is that the parts may not look very different, but the geometry is, and all the changes we've made have made such a huge difference to the handling of the car that it deserves a new name. And the main changes we've done have to do with the front end, so the C-hubs. We've got a lot more caster now. Before we ran 15, now we run 18, and there'll be optional uh, caster blocks with more, more angle to them. Uh, steering knuckles, we now have some inclination, so the kingpin inclination is basically at zero camber. Most cars, the kingpin will be at the same angle, zero. But on our car, we actually have it inclined. And the combination of a lot of caster and some inclination, along with new steering geometry, makes the car a lot easier to drive. We have smooth initial steering, but then when you get into the corner, you have enough steering to carry you through and maintain corner speed. But one thing we wanted to focus on some cars they smooth into the corner and then suddenly they have a lot of steering or they have a push off power but then you get on power and then it has oversteer and we wanted to make it so the steering feels very linear and consistent so whatever speed you're going whatever your throttle input it should always feel the same there should be no surprises so all the transitions are as smooth as possible and that's what we achieved with that with the C-hubs, the knuckles, and the steering. It's the combination of all those parts together that make it work. And um, another difference, which is, again, minor, but it makes a big difference on the track. It's hard to see. Maybe you can see it over here. There's a two mil carbon plate. You just see it there. So I raised the, both the front and the rear gearboxes by two millimeters. Maybe if I do this, you can see that there's a carbon plate there between the chassis and the gearbox. And the whole reason I did this was that this was a, basically a gypsy's way of raising the diff. So the net effect of, of what I did was I raised the diff two mil because I lowered everything else back down. So all the arm holders, are new, the shock towers are new, and everything's lowered back down. So I wanted to do this because the, the drive shaft angles make a big difference to the handling of the car on power. It's because the universals we use, they always want to be straight. And depending on the height of the diff, the friction and the, and the forces on the chassis will be different. And we tried different heights and we found that this height makes the car want to stay low to the ground and it wants to set, stay flat and stable when you get on power. So that the reason for the carbon plates is simply to raise the diffs and we had to change everything around that to maintain the same geometry that we already had. If you threw all the parts against the wall, they'd end up looking like this, well organized. 21 new parts, arms, shock towers, spacers to raise the diffs, new pins so they don't break, drive shafts because the engine changes. It's a lot of new parts, so the black car Gives you a lot of new stuff if you are a white car driver. You can listen to the owner, the driver, the designer talk about their car, and it'll always be the best thing ever. Hell, the last car was probably the best thing they ever made, just like an Apple iPhone. This one's better. 
Why would we release one that's worse? The good news is that I spent the day driving with JQ and testing at this track, Dialed In Raceway, and the car was actually really good. I said you'd never use geometry, but in RC, geometry is key because that's what he changed the most of in the front end. A few degrees here and there makes a big difference on how a car actually feels or handles. That caster degrees, 19, is actually a misprint. Or Joe is just really tricky and tries to mislead everybody, and it is 19 degrees. But he swears it's an 18 degree caster and a revised front suspension geometry. Well, one of the unique features on this car is, is how the drive shafts and hex pins work. Because 8 scale buggies develop a lot of play in the wheels. And on all the other cars, you can't really get it all away but uh, the way we did it is we've got oblong holes in the drive shaft which means that when you tighten the the grub screw in the shaft it's gonna move the pin inwards and the hex is gonna tighten the bearings together so that that's why we have a spacer between the bearings and then you can add additional shims if if it crushes the bearings too much so this spacer and these shims go between the two bearings. So when I tighten this uh, grub screw, it eliminates all the play. And then uh, as you drive your car and it wears out more, you know, the plastic uh, bushings there for, for the bearings, they might start wearing out and everything starts to wobble a bit. Then you add these bigger, bigger shims behind the bearings. And then when you assemble everything, and you've added shims after, after there's been play. When you tighten this grub screw, it's gonna be like brand new. So it eliminates all the play and, and you'll have a free turning axle, yet there's not gonna be any play. I forgot to push Genius. record. You did? No. We have to do this again? <laughs> it's taken seven years for this car to develop into something that actually can win. And not just behind the hands of someone with a lot of talent, but someone like me who doesn't drive that often and gets behind the wheel and feels comfortable. I actually went back and referenced the last time I drove his car on the review and what I wrote. And the new car is radically different from what I remember. His other car was very twitchy off center. This one is very natural. It steers, it turns in, and it hangs on to the corner. If you stay in the traction, it creates a smooth arcing turn and doesn't kind of snap oversteer or understeer in that fact, it's pretty neutral. The bigger thing to me was watching the car. It looks natural on the track. It looks like it's an athlete. It's a good car. Another feature on the Black Edition is uh, the way we can move that engine forwards and backwards. And along with that, we can move the center diff. So you can always have perfect mesh. The way we do it is with a top mount for the engine there. I have one here. You can see there's an arrow on the mount. So arrows forward, we use the forward holes. And if you flip the mount over, arrows back, and still use the forward holes, it moves the motor two mil backwards. We only use the front holes, so a difference of two millimeters already makes a noticeable difference on the track. And I feel like it's more of a preference thing. We don't really change this from track to track, it's just, the weight distribution of the car makes a big difference to the handling and whichever you prefer you tend to stick with on all tracks. When you have the weight further forward, the car will be more nimble, faster in hairpins. I feel it jumps a bit better but it won't be as stable. If you move the motor back you'll have more rear traction, it will be more stable, less, less nervous, less twitchy. So it, it really comes down to driver preference. I don't speak Finnish, Danish, or whatever they speak over there in the other end of the world. But Joe had some balls. And if I could say balls in Finnish, it would sound something like me clearing my throat. He took a chance, designed a car, and stuck with it for seven long years. And the result, for me, is finally something that I would say I would drive. And it's competitive. Beyond the average driver's skill, this car can win races anywhere. And it probably will. But the fact is, he doesn't have a big enough team or a fancy enough driver to really get in the A-Main to break him out of the, oh, it's just another one of the 22 A-Skill options. But it's a serious car. And if you like to support the little guy, the one trying to make a buck in this world and traveling around to track to track and handing, he'll hand you the radio at the track. Ask him to drive his car, he'll give it to you. He's not worried about it. He should be because somebody bent a chassis right next to him doing it. But hey, the car's good. And you watch it, you can see how good it is. It steers, it doesn't bounce around. 
and it's finally maybe made for an American track and not the Euro ones that use cobblestone and uh, trolls under bridges and stuff like that. It actually accelerates pretty hard. Uh, sure, you could tune it to be a little bit more aggressive if that's your steering feel that you want, or you can take some of it out if you don't know how to drive as well. But in the end, the kit that he has right there and his setup will be able to win at the local track and at the big tracks too with some of the big dogs. But until it does, it's going to be a, a you know third or fourth choice for most people. And in the U.S., it's a little harder to find, but you can still get it. Order it online and give it a chance. Our full review will be featured in Velocity RC Cars Magazine, issue number 25, Digital Magazine. You get to download it, take it anywhere, in the bathroom, wherever you want to read it, it's on your tablet. So for now, let's look at Joe's name. Zooming on my nose. <laughs> so, why should someone buy the JT Racing Black Edition? Well, there's there's a lot of different answers to this. Let me just say it this way. I feel like at the moment it's uh, socially unacceptable to endorse JQ Racing. At least within the sort of racing scene, the high-end racing scene. And uh, if, if you run a JQ, you know, I've, I've found that you might get ridiculed at your local track, you know, people might make fun of the car, make uh, you know, fun of you because you chose the JQ, why are you running that thing, blah blah blah. But what's been happening here over the last, last months and maybe whole year is that people have begun realizing that at JQ Racing we have a lot of fun at the races. It's all about fun, it's... Uh, we have maybe the best support out there i reply personally to thousands of facebook messages and emails and whatsapp and uh, face to face at the track i'm always available so are the other people like liam liam galvin online and uh, digani and people have realized that maybe thanks to the blog i do actually they've, they've kind of got more of a context before they thought oh jq that guy's such a dick and now they read what I write every day and they realize now nah, you know what he's actually a pretty funny guy and I feel like when this changes when when this uh, when it becomes so socially acceptable to run a JQ and people aren't ridiculed at the track for doing it anymore there's al already a lot of support I get a lot of support from people who run other cars they say you know JQ I run a hot bodies or a Mugen or whatever but I support everything you do and then I, I'm just like, well, why don't you run a JQ then, if you support me? So, when it switches, when it becomes acceptable to run this, then I think there'll be a lot more of them uh, at your local tracks, and we can have a lot more fun than we already do at the races. And So my message to, to you is, if you're one of those people who support everything we do, then why don't you just get this car and uh, go, the, you know, all the way? Nothing bad is going to happen to you, believe me. Tremendous. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I guess that's that's the reason to to run the Black Edition. If you support JQ Racing, if if you send me messages saying that oh I support everything you do, yet you don't run my car, well now the car is good enough. It's definitely out up there with the best. No excuses. Degani just kicked ass at Silver State. He won the 40 plus class, he, he got 6th in the main, beating some drivers who actually take racing seriously, unlike him. And uh, I made the main, I finished 8th. I thought I think that's pretty good, because I suck as a driver. I mean, there's basically, people are going to have to admit one of two things. Either I don't suck, or the car is good. Take a pick. And I think I suck, so... That's maybe the best reason to buy the car right there. You know, I make mains, I beat good drivers, and I suck. 
and if you're over 40. Yeah, also if you're old, like definitely if you're 40 plus, then I don't know why you're not running. This. I mean, it's so easy to drive, it's bulletproof, especially if you get the DE bumper like uh, Pagani runs, he runs the DE bumper made in USA. And uh, yeah, it's just the best. I was just doing perfect laps before we came up. Yeah. I was gonna say you're gonna choke. This is the choke. Yeah, choking, choking under video. Surveillance. Just remember, welcome to America, America, America.